Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer for Thursday, February the 8th. Evening prayer begins on page 117. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 85 and 86. O Lord, you once favored your land and revived the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the guilt of your people and covered all their sins. You averted all your rage. You calmed the heat of your anger. Revive us now, God, our helper. Put an end to your grievance against us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will your anger never cease? Will you not restore again our life that your people may rejoice in you? Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord has to say a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people and friends and those who turn to God in their hearts. Salvation is near for the God-fearing, and his glory will dwell in our land. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march in the forefront, and peace shall follow the way. <clears throat> Turn your ear, O Lord, and give answer, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. Save the servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Give joy to your servant, O Lord, for to you I lift up my soul. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. In the day of distress I will call, and surely you will reply. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor work to compare with yours. All the nations shall come to adore you, and glorify your name, O Lord, for you are great and do marvelous deeds, you who alone are God. Show me, Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Guide my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forever. For your love to me has been great. You have saved me from the depths of the grave. The proud have risen against me. Ruthless enemies seek my life. To you they pay no heed. But you, God of mercy and compassion, slow to anger, O Lord, abounding in truth and love, Turn and take pity on me. O oh, give your strength to your servant and save your handmaid's child. Show me a sign of your favor that my foes may see to their shame, that you console me and give me your help. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Never flag in zeal. Be aglow with the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. 
Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not, be, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. We have this sort of catena of exhortations from St. Paul. It's all these directives. And if we approach this particular lesson from a sort of cynical mindset, it might sound like St. Paul is basically just handing out directions. He's telling people what to do and how they ought to live and how they ought to behave. And if we look at it sort of in a cynical way, you could make the sort of rather sarcastic argument that, well, Paul's just given us more laws and more rules and more regulations to follow, and where's the grace in all of this? But the thing that St. Paul's exhortations tell us and give us and that they're a gift to us is that they are just that. They are exhortations. It's so much easier to sort of encourage one another, to sort of, you know, build each other up with sort of positive uh, reinforcement, these kind of positive behaviors. We do this with our children. Um, we don't berate them and say, you must do X, Y, and Z. At least that's the hope. It's we encourage them and we exhort them to be as uh, the best kind of person that they can be. And I think that's kind of what's going on with St. Paul. He's not saying that if you don't do such and such that you're going to be judged or that you're going to be a failure. He's saying these are the things that we as people of God do, that we rejoice with one another, that we contribute to the needs of the saints, that we show patience, that we show kindness, that we never avenge uh, ourselves, that we do not respond to evil with evil, that we are the kind of people that do pray for those who persecute us, that we will share what we have with those who don't like us. The bottom line of what St. Paul is getting at is that by doing these kinds of things, by exhorting each other to do these good things, these positive good things, that is how we overcome evil. And in the world that we live in right now, where we see so much violence and so much cruelty and so much anger all around us, the way that we can combat that is by showing kindness to each other, by doing the kinds of things that St. Paul is listing here by having genuine love for one another, by actually caring about our fellow human beings, even if we disagree with them, by, by genuinely caring for each other and doing the kinds of things and exhorting each other to do the kinds of things that St. Paul is talking about, that is how we can overcome evil, by being good. And it's not a matter of us sort of, you know, well, this is the standard that we must set or else we're going to fail and, and you know, those who don't meet the, meet the mark are going to have to just leave and go away. No, that's not what it's about. It's about God's grace is given to us as a gift to overcome the evils of this world. And so even if you sort of look around you and get disheartened by what's happening you know, with the latest news cycle of everything that's going on in the world, we can, in our everyday interactions, on our very sort of basic and local level, do the kinds of things, build the kind of community that helps to counteract the evils of this world by simple acts of kindness, by simple acts of patience, by showing you know, love and respect to someone who's standing in front of you in the grocery store, that kind of behavior can overcome the world's evil. I know that sounds like a very high claim, but I think that that's, it's in some sense very true that our small actions in this world can have a very large impact in a ripple effect. And I think that's what St. Paul is talking about. He was writing to a small community of, of people in, in a very large city. I don't know if he had the, the thought that Christianity would become a world religion, but his attitude and his exhortation to that small Christian community in Rome does wind up making a major difference in the Christian church. And it winds up helping other people in, in the Christian community by living that way to make a broader impact in the world around them.
and here we are. We are the sort of heirs and the, the um, successors to this kind of behavior. And so, again, if we look at it as a sort of list of things that we have to do, then it's just nothing more than, than, than just extra laws and, and, and more of the same. But if we look at it as these are the kinds of gifts that we have been allowed, uh, have been given by God, this is how we can live our lives in a joyful sort of way. And if we exhort one another to live in that sort of way, to, to live into that grace, that makes life so much better, not just for us, but for the entire world, because we're showing the world that we are people who are serious about good news, that we're serious about joy, we're serious about the kind of kingdom that Jesus came to spread. So, these words of St. Paul, good, to, good ones to live by, but they're not rules. They're not rules. They are an expression of God's grace. And for that we can say, thanks be to God. We continue with the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and good will, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the rose rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the silver light of the moon guide your steps in the darkness, and the crickets sing you on your way home. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.